Hello everyone and welcome back to To Mars and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We begin by launching a nuclear ion engine unit to our second ship, the Joplin, which is currently in low Earth orbit. And we are doing so with the Orion carrier plane and its methane oxygen recoverable second stage, Star Stage 2, which was also made for use in Starship so that it could have an upper stage that could boost things up and that upper stage would still be recoverable. So it is a dual purpose unit. It has four 250 kilonewton engines, which means it doesn't provide that much thrust, uh, not as much as our hydrogen uh, stage that we had in the previous video. So we do need to tilt up a little bit in order to make sure it actually gets to orbit. And we would like uh, the Orion carrier plane to boost it up to a higher position initially. Now, with residuals, things are a little bit tight. We would have been able to do this just fine in 1.8.1. Uh, it's just a little bit trickier because both the Erex engines down here, if I can click on one, uh, and the engines on Star Stage 2 have these residuals, which means unusable propellant. In Realism Overhaul, they add that in 1.12, or in the uh, uh, version between 1.8.1 and 1.12. And so we have to worry about that because it was originally set up to be fairly tight. Uh, you know, we are just bringing up exactly what this system is capable of bringing up to orbit and now it's capable of bringing just a little bit less to orbit so in order to adjust for that i've uh, underdone the xenon gas a little bit but we have to hit the inclination pretty well on launch making sure that we get in line with the target otherwise if we have extra inclination to fix then that is going to be more of a problem now the inclination issue is tricky because the Orion carrier plane has to launch to the Bahamas so it can land. We are going to insist on that. So it's heading like that. That will cross the line of Joplin's orbit, but it's not in line with Joplin's orbit. And so Star Stage 2 is going to have to do a dogleg, basically, to turn into, uh, Star Sta uh, into Joplin's orbit once we cross it. And that's the fun part. <laughs> well, that takes a little bit of effort. So here we go. Uh, SAS on, throttle up, and ignition, and launch. And that little jump with the camera can be avoided if I just aim camera at the Orion carrier plane initially. One of the benefits of launching from Tampico is that there's no land between us and the Bahamas, actually, unless there's some stray island somewhere. But also that there's this waterway here, so it's sort of like Cape Canaveral, you can bring stuff in fairly easily. And so that was one of the attractive features. This area here that we're launching from is actually an industrial facility of some kind. So I figure it's a good fit if, you know, you wanted your space program to buy that up. It's probably already pretty well set up. And it's a safe distance away from the actual city. Okay, switching engines off and rolling. Yeah, as expected, it's a bit tight here. Let me throw all down. But we should still be able to reserve enough fuel in the carrier plane for its return. It really doesn't need that much for the RCS. That'll have to do. All right. Separation. About 113 meters per second there, for just for RCS. Bearings. And let me just make sure we're controlling from here. And prograde RCS and ignition. Okay, but we have to reacquire our target. Okay, looking good so far. Uh, we really want our time to descending node to still be above zero as we try to correct the inclination. That means that we're approaching the crossing point, but haven't passed it yet. So we're still trying to tilt it north up where it is. And time to wap waps this is manageable right now, it seems. Still, I mean, we're still four minutes of stage time and 30 seconds, though. So maybe I'll tilt up a little bit more. Delta V-wise, we're tight, as expected. But we're still, when you add up the two numbers, more than 7,800. So that's okay too for now. We could leave Star Stage 2 in a suborbital trajectory and just have the payload complete orbit. It's got fuel. 
but it's already gonna do all the work to rendezvous, so. So the Orion carrier plane would be going on a path like this and then come into a landing here. That's where our landing site is. We've tilted north, which is why we're crossing over Miami. I'm just gonna expend it. Oh, well, maybe not. That's actually gonna get to orbit at this rate, so... Alright. Let's see now. That's that one's our CS thrusters. Well, we probably want the nuclear engines to be active here. So, that's those two. Yep. Let's make sure. Alright. 600 meters per second should be enough to get there. The tanks that are ready in orbit for the Joplin have plenty of hydrogen, so... Alright, let's just stop it there. We'll give it its target. The Joplin set its target. Alright, well, just for the heck of it, we'll try and follow this down. I think the RCS can use the residual fuel. The adapter is an unusable, por unreusable portion, though. So we have to jettison it. Please? Be right? Okay. Yeah, alright. Adapter jettisoned. Now we have the heat shield free. Okay, we are coming in. We are now decelerating, getting the flame effects. Now one reason it has so much ablator is because it's designed to also come back from lunar trajectories as well. And of course you don't really want all your ablator to be gone. Okay, our parachutes have deployed. We are at 8.2 meters per second. It looks good for recovery. We are over the water. Somewhere. <laughs> Wherever these coordinates are. Looks like, I don't know, Indian Ocean? Okay, well, I will actually say recover vessel, if it lets me. Nice to see the water physics is still the same. Okay, well, I have time warped a little bit to phase with our target, and this is ready to go for our first rendezvous burn. Guess I might as well deploy the radiator, so I'm late. The spool up time is immense. Yep, there it is. I need to remember to put lights on these things. Okay, sorry it's not so visible right now, but we have to dock when we have to dock, so. All right, and we have in fact docked. And we have plenty of liquid hydrogen right now. Though, I don't know why it's only reading 164 meters per second. <laughs> um, uh, maybe some crossfeed thing needs to happen. Enable crossfeed. Ah, there we go. Yeah, uh, let's get into daylight. We probably need to enable crossfeed on some other docking ports too. No boil off now. At the moment, zero boil off on the liquid hydrogen, thanks to the huge radiator, and also these radiators. So that's what it looks like. That's the Joplin right now. We'll add more tanks to it, but I want to do something with our other ship, the St. Louis, uh, prior to potentially sending something to series. It looks like series will probably be the subsequent episode, next episode. There we go, 3,735, but that's without any payload at all. So yeah, we'll probably want some more tankage on here and the, uh, that's not including the ion engine bit. So I wonder if uh, Megjeb says something good about that. Not really. Uh, we do have 2.16 million units of xenon gas, but um, it, it sure adds a lot of different delta Vs here. I don't know which one might be correct. And in the future, I want to make uh, hydrogen drop tanks. What's going to happen is that instead of having everything integrated as it is in the NASA plan, uh, well, one NASA plan, another NASA plan had drop tanks too. 
uh, what we are going to do is take the RCS portion of this and the structural portion of it and the control portion of it and docking ports and separate that out and just have a hydrogen tank without any of the RCS bits and so the RCS control and docking ports will wrap around the hydrogen tank and once the hydrogen tank is expended it will drop out so that we can save that mass and we are going to just add new ones in to the bracket so that is another design that's not my idea it's uh, existing design for drop tanks and maybe you've seen it in uh, some program proposal or another but I want to make a part like that so we don't have the integrated method that we have here where all that stuff is integrated with the tank but it's a little bit more of a hassle in one way but since we have to replenish the fuel anyway maybe it'll be easier and it'll give us a little bit more delta v if we drop that stuff then again we're also littering so it depends on your point of view uh so yeah that is joplin for now next up we're launching xenon gas to the st louis yes more xenon gas because we used up most of what we launched in the previous episode but this time the st louis is lower and so we can send more to it and i'm hoping we can send 17 tons to it we're carrying 2.88 million units of xenon gas as opposed to the 2 million we sent before uh, but the uh, st louis is still in a fairly high orbit it's not easy to get to but maybe i'm being too conservative here as far as how much i'm sending we'll see and we also have mli layers on the upper stage this time i didn't forget that so we won't have as much boil off we probably will have some still but we'll see so throttle up sas is on ignition and launch and off it goes with a little bit of a rocking from the pad not ideal i need to figure that one out Okay, shut off and roll. Ah, uh, looks like we don't have quite as much Delta V as normal. I did increase the payload size, so... Maybe I should have decreased something else to compensate there. It's not too far off that it wouldn't potentially be able to glide to uh, the Bahamas. Uh, it's a bit iffy. Alright. Separation. And fairings, and we need to control from this core here. All right, prograde, RCS, and ignition. And let's get ourselves properly set up. We definitely have to make a pretty sharp northerly turn here. And that's to the St. Louis. You can see that its path is a little bit more inclined. We're going like this right now to the Bahamas, so we need to make that left turn. I'll aim to dispose of the stage. We'll just use as much as we can out of it to correct the inclination here. Okay, we brought it down to below 5 degrees, but I think that's all I'm gonna do with it. try and get as close to orbit as possible with it, but we'll still need the upper stage itself to finish off. Let me control from here now because we'll probably want to. Cut that, and separation, and hopefully we can push forward a bit. Oh gosh, it's, it's turning up. Okay, maybe it'll be okay. Oh, it really went uh, all over the place there. I don't know what I was thinking. What were you thinking? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it should be a... well, it's just gonna be disposed of anyway, but... Yeah, that's an interesting turn it made. Okay. Mm, this is a little wobbly too. I guess we can just finish orbit here. Twenty-four minute stage. Great. Okay, let's see about the rendezvous. We've got three thousand eight hundred and ninety to work with. Okay, we've got an approach that will get us into render range there, and we need 
1,563 initially, a correction of 332, and then just 200. So we've got way more than that. So we could have probably delivered more than we are right now, which is 17 tons. And yeah, uh, we've got like 1,600 extra. So this will be able to deorbit itself. That's the good news. Bad news is I could have added more to it, and I was way too conservative with it. With it. So, well, lesson for next time, but let's try and do all this properly. It's going to be a longish burn. It's basically half of our stage time, which is 12 minutes. And settling fuel down. And go. Okay, first burn complete. Okay, I messed up the time warp because I've gotten too used to the KSP2 time warp steps, I guess. So I went right past the node, and we are just correcting that. We'll take a little bit more juice, but it'll be all right because we had too much ready. So, and we really we might be able to transfer some liquid hydrogen in, but not a whole lot anyway. So most of the mass is liquid oxygen. So yeah, a little bit of a goof up, but we're still good to go. Okay, ignition. Okay, well, right next to India there, and approaching our target right here. At least this time we get to dock in daylight. Okay, well, our target's rotating. Slowly, actually, we're in time warp, but still definitely rotating. I needed to stop that. Uh, we'll wait until it's in a favorable rotation, though. Okay, right there would be good. Right, kill rotation, please. Okay, lined up. And approaching to dock. Still a bit of a tight fit here. There is a docking port on the nose as well, but this is sort of the, the utility one. Alright, moving that xenon gas in. We are not immediately using this to bring the orbit down. We'll just keep the orbit where it is. Because we have to boost it up again. The crew has to board this at a high altitude, basically beyond the radiation belts. So it'll boost itself up to beyond the radiation belts and get refueled again. And then the crew will board because we don't want them going through the radio. Right now, it's going through the radiation belts every time, I think. So, yeah, we don't want that to happen. And if we bring the ship down to a low Earth orbit, then we'll get, we're going to have to boost it all the way up again before the crew actually gets to board. So, I mean, it's reasonable to supply it at this altitude. I think it looks like we can bring up more than 17 tons at a time, probably more than 20 tons, maybe maybe about 20 tons. We'll see. Uh, this uh, certainly had plenty of fuel left. I think we can just dump the hydrogen in. I don't know if the RCS can do all of it. Uh, its own RCS fuel can do the deorbiting, that's what I mean. But uh, let's see. Our our old boil off. No MLI. I thought I had put. Oh well, though this is the St. Louis. This is not the Joplin. The Joplin has MLI layers on the back. This one doesn't. Okay. Well, let's move it to one of these tanks. Let's see. This has. This definitely has MLI layers and seems to be. Let's see. Boil off loss. Well, it's going down, but initially it seems to have a lot of heat penetration. Well, hopefully it can moderate that. What if we put it into this tank? Uh, this number seems a little bit lower, I think. All right. Let's make sure to dispose of this refueler this time. We probably still kept too much in it. Okay, here at Ampoapsis, Orbit Retrograde. I'll just dump the oxygen 
I'm pretty sure we have enough, but just in case we can dump some of the oxygen. Okay, and selling fuel down. And actually the St. Louis is still right there, 17 kilometers away, but ignition. Okay, yeah, plenty. This one is going down. We could have put some more hydrogen in the St. Louis, but it's okay. All right, so we'll go back to the St. Louis. And we'll wrap it up here for today as we see the refueler float by. I guess I'll get a little shot here. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.